or anything else like that, pop it in the chat, folks. I need to speak to Vitor now. I need to get an update from Portugal. Door. What I've always admired about you, uh, Vitor, is your application to yourself as much as developing your business externally. You are a big personal development man. It is great that we three are on the screen this morning uh, with that shared interest in life. And I think you, of all people, Vitor, demonstrate that you know your business development is direct, directly related to your personal development. Tell us what has gone on in this what i don't know maybe it's a couple of years now since we've been speaking to you how is portugal door coming along and what amazing personal growth insights have you had along the way yeah absolutely i mean a lot of things are changing and improving uh, we're always constantly learning we're not where we want to be yet but we're working every day to get at least one little step closer mm -hmm. uh, so we can get in there biggest change that happened recently is there are two things really so right now we're we're working with uh, with a mentor he has over 40 years of international experience on real estate and um we he, he also speaks portuguese but he's been on canada most of his life and we really want to start increasing the bar for what portuguese real estate can be here in portugal because talking to him i understand even more of the differences of what real estate here can be and uh, what it actually is namely for example the fact that you barely have buyer's agents here in portugal it's like almost every agent is essentially a seller's agent even if you know uh, a buyer goes to them because they just want to close the deal they just want to sell they just want to get their commission and it's done like kind of mercenary stuff yes. right hey, uh, I want to buy a house and whatever. And you talk to five agents and they all go running around like headless chickens and maybe they find a property or two and then you get multiple properties that come your way. Maybe you've seen a few of them and then you end up, maybe, okay, this is the one I want to buy and you close and then they're like, yay, I closed one of the few deals I get per year and done, right? Mm -hmm. So we're working on starting, you know, doing a really focused and professional buyer's representation work with a contract with all of those things and we've decided that we're going to go into a system where the buyers will ensure our compensation so we'll we're asking for a three percent plus tax and the way it works is that will allow us to make any deal happen regardless of it's an agency that doesn't want to share for any reason or if it's uh, an owner that doesn't work with real estate agents because he doesn't want to pay commission. And if we do have uh, an agency that, you know, have a 4% listing, for example, and they do share 2% with us, then the client only pays us the difference. They only pay the 1%. Wow, okay. So that, you know, our fee will be the 3% of the property like value. If we have compensation from another side, then the client just pays the difference because I think it's fair. Because yeah, if it's yeah. with an agent, usually their commission is already on top. So, you know, and that way we can really focus on doing a clear professional work. Like when I started, like when when I first came on your show and people were calling me, um, I was still with the Portuguese mindset of, oh, let's help my neighbor. And I would run around and, you know, I would even tell people, oh, don't worry about it. Like, after we find you a home, uh, if you'd like, you can give me a tip. So I was basically working pro bono, yes. right? And Here's a euro. <laughs> and inadvertently, uh, guilt tripping clients into <laughs> sending me money, right? But, One euro, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're, they're thinking, oh my God, he's put me in such a difficult position. What do I do? Give him 10 euros or enough for a prato do dia? I mean, I'd have gladly given the guy several thousand euros as a, as a commission on this because we're delighted. But I but don't want him to be insulted. <laughs> That's right. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, but I mean, uh, it's, <laughs> you know, it's how I started. And um, but the reality is, I know, uh, you know, you can't really do good work like that because you have. Yes, to yes. You have yes, to. yes, yes. Yeah. And if I'm just going to help everybody. It's like, um, yeah, I'll help you out and I'll pay you when I get finished and whatever. And there's no commitment. There's no certainty. Then instead of worrying about finding a home for you, I'll have to worry, oh, 
geez, we have to find a way to make money so we can have pay rent. Exactly. Yes, well, it can help keep a roof over your own head whilst you're yeah. helping everybody out for nothing. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is this is this is the what we're talking about, I suppose. This is fascinating, isn't it? To to have this time scale and to watch how your business is developed and how you know you are relating to clients coming into the country, how the Portuguese culture and American culture, for example, are meeting each other and what's going on. Uh, and this clearly is a change for you. And what we're talking about, I think, is the professionalization of real estate, is it not? Because yeah. Professionalization in the best possible way is people being supported to do their jobs well, to be well resourced, well funded, to be good at what they do, and for that to be recognized. And the way we recognize things in our culture is to pay people adequately and for you to get set up and for you, your business to run smoothly. So you're not constantly worried about where the next meal is coming from or if you're going to be able to pay your rent while you're busy helping people. So where yeah. are you in that process? I think you mentioned at the beginning of the conversation it's going to take a while to do uh, and you've not got to where you want to do. But where are you in this trajectory and, and, and what do you need from us as a community, Vitor? Right. Well, um, I, I think first um, there, there needs to start being a mindset shift. There needs to start being a cultural change. For example, another part of this real estate bit that I'm talking about is also on the part of the seller's agent, which we're also seller's agent. And about two weeks ago, um, an interview of me and Portugal Door came out on one of the main newspapers here in the region. And we got tons of phone calls from people who wanted to do business partnerships or sell their properties. And we've seen some very nice properties. Um, but um, about half of them, I would go in there and see the property and they would still have this Portuguese idea that, oh, I only do non exclusive open listings. <laughs> so if you want to sell my house, we do a contract, but we want to sign with other agencies or whatever. And if we sell ourselves, then, um, then we don't want to pay commission. It's like, okay, that's no problem. We don't have to work together. Because that's another thing that a lot of Portuguese agents do. They go in there, they do the, the listing presentation and whatever. And they're like, oh, we just want open listing. Okay, then, okay, let's do it. No, it's you can't work professionally like that. It's one of those things that I would rather you go to your nephew that just became a real estate agent and give him the exclusive listing. Okay, maybe not. I hope he at least hires a photographer. Then have this knowledge that we have here in Portugal, which is nobody cares. Like the agents don't care about the seller. They just care about their commission. The sellers don't care about the agents. They just care of whoever can sell my property. Yes. I find that needs to be a commitment. Like if you're going to hire a professional, vet that professional very well. If you don't think I'm fit to, to serve you, that's okay. We don't have to work together. But find one agent you can trust, whether it's a buyer or a seller. Give them your commitment. Sign a contract with them. Be specific. And then work with them. If it doesn't work out, Thank you very much for your service. Go on to the next person. Instead of just, you know, going with everyone at once. It's like, how many people are you married to, Carl? Just the one. Why? Uh, it's against the law. Well, what actually, no. Is there, what is there, what is there somebody <laughs> that's, that's, Carl. that's not a good answer. Sorry, what's the right answer? <laughs> Imagine that. Oh, you know what? I, I really like you and all, but let's. You know, let, let's just keep the, the doors open. You know, I, I never know if I yes. can find a better lady or whatever, or if she can find a better Carl. Well, Does yes. Do like you know that? what? Do you know what? I have lived like that. And whilst that seems like an amazing idea and concept and fairly easy to sell, especially to a man, it is disastrous. It is. It's <laughs> the effects of it are horrific. Uh, whilst on, on, on the face of it, it might seem like a, a great idea and a free and easy <laughs> sort of, uh, you know, um, free love society. It doesn't Well, and the, the key help. here, essentially what you're saying, Vitor, is that if you can create a relationship with these people and they get to know who you are and what you can provide them, they will want you to be their exclusive lister. They will right. choose you. They won't want every everyone else I go oh this is right. a guy to go with right yeah. Yeah. in this case i'll go with an excuse an exclusive lister that's right. the key selling yourself through relationship which is what you do from everything i've seen amazing we, to, we, right. we, we should point out or i'd like i would like to point out that uh, there is a sort of c contextual cultural issue here whilst everyone is operating in the way that vitor is 
uh, attempting to transform and evolve that is a difficult mold to break out of isn't it it takes time it takes time to go from listings everywhere and hoping for the best and getting a bit of commission from here and a bit of commission from there and being a bit desperate into being very professional that doesn't happen overnight does it and it takes a very brave and committed person to do that and you have to be supported in the meantime don't you otherwise you will yeah. revert and resort to the standing culture which is to be hustling and driving around and helping people and praying to god that your rent will get paid and that there'll be enough food to put on the table now the thing is with that and you, we were getting some lovely feedback about you viv is here uh, who we also see on a monday from time to time vito will never put money before service he's an extraordinary human so say all of us he did such a wonderful job for us and bob uh, bon dia, Torush. Good stuff, Vito, uh, in support of what you're saying as well. Thank I mean, you. anybody who wants you to work for them and doesn't think you should be paid well or, and be able to feed you, you, your child and, and put a roof over your head, you probably don't want that client, do you? You do want exactly. the client. Exactly. That's yes. what I've learned recently. Like, uh, yes. I think it was last week, I had a meeting with a client. He was a referral from um, uh, an entrepreneur I know in Braga, and he wanted to buy an apartment they're in Braga as well, right? And we talked and he said, hey, I'm working with his own agent. Uh, we've seen some properties, but we didn't really like his work. Oh, well, I'm like, that's fine. Let me explain how we work. We charge, you know, we charge a thousand up front plus tax, then the 3%, the same way I explained. And then he was like, okay, so if they only share like 1.5% or 2% or whatever, then maybe I would have to pay you in total close to 5,000. And I'm like, that's right seems like you don't really feel like paying that. And he was like, no, not really. Then that's okay. You can work with the zone agent. Hope everything mm -hmm. goes well. I'm sure he might take care of you professionally. If he drops the ball or if you need anything, we'll be right here. Wow. Now, did it take, I mean, you wouldn't have said that two years ago, would you? I wouldn't. And in fact, there was a point in time where we had some clients that um, they, every day they had, some sort of issue or some confusion or some problem or they would panic about anything, right? They were very picky, they were very specific. And at the same time, we were dealing with other clients that were fantastic, that were really, you know, grateful and helpful and all of that. But the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So we spend <laughs> so, so, so long trying to cater to these clients that were always throwing problems that we almost neglected the other ones. The other ones, we also find them a home. They're here. They're happy. They're one of the, one of our best friends right now. But um, at the end of the day, when the other clients arrived, they walked into a property. They thought it was horrible, and they were just in a panic, and they had to live in the living room because they couldn't stand the smell of mold. I couldn't smell anything. Maybe I have Portuguese immunity. I don't know. But long story short, they... They went back to their country after like a month or two and uh, they never paid us. Wow. Okay. And you want to avoid that, don't you? You can't have that happening. And th there, there are people like that in the world, aren't there? You don't want there those. Are. And so that is why I've now made the decision that I only want to work with people who can appreciate what we do and value what we do. I understand there's always a concern because like until you work with me, you don't know how I work. You don't know if I'm a trustworthy person, if I'm going to get the job done, if I'm going to be another example of a Portuguese culture where, okay, let's get this done. You have three weeks to go. Let's do this. And then three years later, we're still working on it, right? The value of referrals. Yeah. That, too. that, that is yeah. happening, isn't it? That is happening for you, Navito. I'm, very, I'm so pleased to see this. Um, and I do want to, I mean, I admire how you're being the change you want to see in the world. Essentially, that's what's going on here, isn't it? Yeah. You, you see this being a different, um, a, a, you see a different possibility. And that possibility from your, from what I know of you as a man is about win-win as well. It's not just about you seeing a great opportunity you can exploit in, in the culture and what's going on. I, I, I just want to see listings with good pictures on the internet. How hard is that to ask for? Yes, right. James, did you want to add something there? It's not, well, I believe, to hire a photographer. It's like 40 or 50 euros mm -hmm. for a whole home with yeah. complete tripod pictures and Photoshop and everything to make it look good. Why? 
Why yeah. is it well, we, we come full circle, don't we? In the same way that the lady who's teaching you Chinese said, it's only 1% about the language. It's, it, the rest of it is culture, or a big part of it is culture. It's the same with the industry you're in, isn't it? As Tony is saying here, a morning, a bit of Tony time for you. It's all about value proposition, and real yes. estate has little to do with homes. Isn't that interesting? It might only be 1% homes. It's all about building relationships. Tony yes. time, the man in the media. Say that. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's all, it's what everything uh, Victor is talking about is relationship. You could take everything Victor just said about the real estate industry and apply it to personal relationships. And it's all true. Yes, yes. You know, yeah. you, you, you have to understand your value so you don't have to settle. It's like, I'm worth more than that. And that, whether that's personal relationship or business relationship, it's all relationship. And that's what matters. Yes, absolutely. I've been impressed by you, Vitor, since the mo first moment I saw one of your bonkers posts on Facebook. And and I, I'm so lovely. I believe in you, mate. And I, I love what you're doing. And it's been wonderful to see this unfold um, in front of us, in front of our very eyes. So on a, on a, pra a pragmatic um, and prosaic and practical note, how t how can we help you? What what do you need? Do you need people to what, what to, to work with you at PortugalDoor.com? Well, um, you, you'd like them to. The invitation is there. We're kind of short staffed a little bit, yeah, but uh, we we have to think about the salary a bit. But uh, at this moment, the um, the focus right now is to show results. So we have a bunch of listings that um, we're preparing to, to come on the market. Um, out of that interview I mentioned, we've had a few contacts for properties over a million. And yeah. the interesting thing is that it feels like the more luxurious the property is and the client is, the less they argue about you know an exclusive listing, 6% per, per tax commission, all of those things. Because uh, it's like, okay, they, they appreciate good work, right? So mm -hmm. I, I found that interesting bit. But yes. right now, we need to get more listings, take great pictures, do a great work at it, show the Portuguese people in particular what can be done. And of course, any uh, expat that has a property they'd like to sell, advantage. I speak the language. I understand. Um, mm -hmm. And... Um, Maybe soon we'll also be focusing on that because right now we're also working to build a network of resources all over the country. Yeah. Where if you need, you know, if you're in the Algarve and you want to sell a home there, right? And you don't speak Portuguese, like I can't take your listing. I mean, I could, but it wouldn't be professional work. Yeah, I don't really know the market. I'm not from there, but I can find you an agent in the area that I can refer you to. And they can care of you. We can vet them and make sure that everything works. So right now, I mean, it's keeping on building the relationships, building the branding, uh, and help spread the message. Like help focus on working with uh, in professional ways. Like you know, I, I I had my chance because I worked like pro bono and kind of wild around, and I would bug tony on occasion and he'd be like dude j just research like come on stop calling me <laughs> <laughs> right i wasn't even in his company he wasn't being paid by anything i did right yes but um but yeah keep growing keep uh, keep evolving and start raising the standards of what good work is yeah because, um it's you know, holding people accountable like don't be mean at them but you know Actually, that mentor I was talking about, and I'm not sure if we're too over time, he, um, you know, he mentioned that here in Portugal, if people say, oh, um, I'm going to take care of that. Okay, when? Oh, well, uh, I'll let you know tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow at what time? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> After lunch. Like, start holding people accountable. Nail it down. Okay, you're going to do By it. When? when? Yes. When? Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's put it, it on the be, It wouldn't be the end of the world. It wouldn't be the end of the culture, would it, to have to have some of that? But I mean, you know, this is all beautiful as well. How all these things are working together, coming together, human beings, you know, from different cultures working together, and hopefully we evolve and have a sort of hybrid situation. And it's all work in progress. And at this moment, I mean, can I can I beg a few more minutes off you both? Otherwise, before somebody starts buying us a clock, as it were, in a Chinese, <laughs> in a Chinese sort of way, um, we we have talked for a little while about the idea of a, a kind of um, expat angel investment mentoring system. 
And there, we know, don't we, that there are people coming uh, from, from the States or other countries who are retiring in Portugal who have incredible business insight, acumen, and also might want to invest in new companies. And I think that it's it just having this conversation this morning, it feels like the time is right to f f to bring these things together, to have young um, Portuguese entrepreneurs with good ideas and with good hearts um, and, and, and an open mind to be supported. So uh, just a little plug for that idea. I know some of us have been talking about it behind the scenes, but it will be right uh, for that support to take place because I think it's difficult to, you know, it's like standing on your own shadow to change the culture single-handed and feel like, like that, that you 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 are the financing, <laughs> right? But you know, the, you know, you what your what your um, your investors are going to be looking for is that kind of spirit and that kind of vision, and they're also going to be looking for a business plan that they can understand and would want to put their money into. But well, I think we're there. I think we're there in that that place, and you know, they might be they might want to mentor you as well as part of their investment in the company they want to see their money grow but they want to see this idea grow and this transformation of a particular part of, of the culture that i think will be of you know a win-win benefit win-win-win yeah. win. you know win for the, each of the individuals and a win for the culture that we we find ourselves in so a little bit of a plug for that james did you want to add anything uh <laughs> Not specifically to that. I've been in the back of my head. I've been turning around this whole mathematic thing about 2023 20, and your age. And I knew there was a simple answer. And the bottom line is it's true every day, every year for everybody. It's yes, nothing right. particularly special. So again, I guess it's the gaslighting in the question itself yes. that I'm, that I'm saying be mindful of is that they're distracting you from how simple it is by making it look really special and complex. So yeah. maybe that's the key. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you, Vitor. Final words. Oh, actually, I've got to, a dad jokes and a Portugal quiz question of the day to share with you. But Vitor, did you want to wrap up or sum up anything there that, that uh, you've heard or want to share with us? Well, in summary, we're very excited for the future. We're going to keep growing. We understand that the world is facing all of these challenges. You know, we're just going to focus on doing the right thing for us and those near to us and our clients and our friends. So, yeah, uh, exactly. exactly what the future holds. Keep up that great work, my friend, and uh, hopefully having conversations with you about it and celebrating your success in 5, 10, and 20 years to come. Right, uh, here it is, the Portugal. I'm going to do the quiz with you, uh, and, then, and then you'll be rewarded with some dad jokes, okay?